century. 2020, I don't know, I don't know, 21st century. Notebook of 2020. Hey, I am thankful for, uh, I never thought I'd really say that, I am thankful for computers uh, after going through my old notes through notebooks. It's, it's more fun to just be able to type in a word and be like, okay, it's in here, instead of like searching for an hour on something. Uh, anyway, uh, so hey, we are in, we're not just in church, we are the church and we're gathered here today because we want to hear from the Lord. We want to hear from Him. And you know, when the Word of God is spoken, he, the Bible tells us that He accompanies His Word. Okay, so because He accompanies His Word, the, the words that even that I speak today, he, the Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit of God will take and He will talk directly to you and He'll bring you what we would call a rhema word or a spoken word. And see, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So unless you hear a spoken word, you can't have faith for anything. Faith is the victory that you need to overcome anything in this world. And the Holy Spirit, when the word of God is spoken, he accompanies it and he takes it and he'll put it, it, it it'll speak it to your heart. I'll say things today by the Spirit of God and the, he'll say things completely different to you that I didn't say because he's that good and he wants you to overcome by hearing from him. He wants faith deposited to you today because, because he wants you walking in a life filled with victory that he paid for and that's called salvation. That's called the gospel. We're going to talk a little bit this morning. This is like a standalone message uh, called grace to you grace to you. I, 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 I think this is one of the most under or overused, uh, least understood words in all of scripture, and that's grace. That's grace. And, and, and I, I've been in this, um, in this study uh, in my own personal time. You know, sometimes I study for Sunday, sometimes. Uh, um, <laughs> most of the time, um, I study for Sunday or I just, you know, what the Lord's speaking, like I feel like for here, but, but there's also my own time, right? My own time, things that I, I need for me or, or things that the Lord's really deal, talking to me about. And, and one of those is spiritual gifts. And, and so I find myself right now in, in 1 Corinthians and I've just found myself over and over and over in 1 Corinthians. And the other day, um, I, I, was, I had like about a 10 minute window to like hit some exercise. So I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it real hard. And I put on, I was like, I got to put on something so I can, you know, like feed myself while I'm exercising. And uh, so I find something, I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. And I hit play, and my world got rocked. Um, as a, this, uh, Rick, his name was Rick Renner, if you've, maybe you've heard of him, uh, just a, a Greek scholar. Uh, and he just, uh, uh, maybe if you've heard of this book called Sparkling Gems, and he just talked about Corinth. It was just all, that's what he was talking about was Corinth and, um, and just the history of Corinth and, and how the city was rebuilt and, and how the city was rebuilt uh, after it was devastated by war. This king said, we need to, we need to rebuild the city because it has two ports or, or the city's on an island that has two ports. It's, it, it could be huge for uh, income and all these kind of things, but nobody wanted to go there because it was a desolate place. So what he did is he got, uh, he, he said, I'm going to dedicate this, this city to uh, the goddess of sex, and, and so everybody will want to go there. And not only that, but the first people that go there, I will make you founders of the city. You will inherit lands. And, and so the people that showed up there and took over uh, and, and, and started this city uh, would have been uh, your sailors and your ex-military dudes, right? And, so they, and then not only that, um, uh, they would, the, the people that were there would have been uh, those that are looking to make money, get in on the good deal. All about, okay, this is the history of the city of Corinth. And, and the city of Corinth, and again, I'm talking to you. I'm kind of laying a foundation, what I'm going to talk about this morning, and how I got here. Um, but this, the, the city of Corinth, if you look in 1 Corinthians, you'll find that he talks a lot about spiritual gifts. Okay? And he talks about praying in tongues. He talks about prophecy. He talks about word of knowledge, word of wisdom, all these kind of things that are gifts of the Spirit, or that word gifts, charismas, or the, which, you know, like if you had charisma, right? Uh, if you have a gift for something, right? There's these gifts that come from this word grace. Charismas is this word cherish, or can you see that, those two words, how they fit together? Charisma, C H R I S, M M S. Okay, you know, I got that. All right. Um, all right, I'm trying to slow down here. 
But then you have charis, which is the Greek word grace. Maybe you know somebody by the name of uh, by the name Chera or Chera. It's it's that word grace in the Greek. And um, and so this this word that we uh, we, we see here, it, he talks about uh, in First Corinthians one four. He says, "I thank God for the grace given to you." And the grace given to you, if you look, read First Corinthians, uh, you you see that he's talking to uh, homosexuals. Okay, he's talking to uh, Dudes that were sleeping with their dad's wife, okay? He's talking to guys that had no, uh, no idea about what, what, what sex uh, is other than the fact that they like to have sex with anything and anyone, and they're just sexual, okay? Um, he's talking to people that are abusers and thieves. He's talking to, listen, he's talking to the sailors. He's talking to the, okay, the, sail, the ex-sailors that... Came, Paul comes to Corinth, and he starts a church, and he comes not in words of wisdom, man's wisdom, but in demonstration and, and power, and, and these people come to Christ, and they give their lives to Christ, and after they give their lives to Christ, there's a work that Christ has done, but their lives still look uh, like what they had some, to some extent in the past. So you understand? And so, um, but he says, I thank God for the grace given to you in 1 Corinthians 1 4, he says, I thank God for that. So there is a grace given to these people, yet there is very much correction going on in the church. Now, I think it's really important for us to understand that when you look in 1 Corinthians, you see all these spiritual gifts, you see prophecy. Matter of fact, uh, uh, like if you were to go to Bible school, they would say uh, the church at Corinth probably excelled in spiritual gifts or gifts of the Spirit more than any other church. Yet they were the most carnal church, okay, uh, out of any church. In other words, they were baby Christians or they were in such a culture, okay, that that culture got on them and they had to be changed continually to not look like that. It wasn't, Paul didn't say it's okay, I understand that that's where you came from, let's just stay there. Why? Because the works of the flesh and the works of sin produce death and that's not God's plan for your life. So what happened is, is Paul didn't say you worthless piece of trash. He said, hey, there's things named among you and I'm not, I'm giving you the overview of just reading it a bunch of times. There are things named among you that aren't even named among the people out there. Like, again, sleeping with your, your dad's wife and, and all these kind of crazy craziness. He said, that needs to not be, that's a work of the flesh, but the works of God are this. And he talks, and so there's correction brought, and let me just say this. I believe where we stand in this season as the church, and not just as the church, but as, not just the nation, but as the world, we are, if you could, put yourself in Corinthian days. The Corinthians uh, were, were known for drinking. Like, matter of fact, other parts of the Roman Empire, if you were called a, Cor- a, a Corinthian, you, you, you know, they'd use that as like a, a derogatory term as a drunkard, okay? Uh, just, that was just part of their makeup. It was, it was kind of like, what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth, right? <laughs> that's the this, that's this city, the hub. Come in, come out, go, leave, whatever you want. Matter of fact, there's even a temple that's dedicated to the goddess of sex, all right? So kind of a crazy place, and really, in the day and age in which we're living right now, it's kind of a crazy place. And if you're not careful, the culture will get on you. And as a pastor, uh, there is a grace given to me, which is a gift, okay, given to me to, just like Paul said, by the grace given to me, I, Paul, have laid a foundation. So there was a grace that Paul, or a gift given to Paul that he couldn't do what he was about to do apart from that gift. So, so there, there's, there are things, let me even say this to you, we're going to get to this this morning, but there are things that God has graced you to do, that, that you are meant to do, uh, that you can't do without that grace, but if we don't understand and make much of the grace, we'll never do what we were created to. So we're going to make much of the grace this morning, and I'm going to say grace to you this morning as we look at that and, 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 and draw our attention that as a pastor today in the 20th century or 21st century, um, that I'm going to bring correction in the church more, probably more often today than, than what would have been in, in years gone by because of the culture. 
Now, why is that? Because we are to shine as stars among, among the nations. In other words, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill. But if the light it doesn't shine, well, then how are people going to see? If the salt doesn't have the savor, then how is it going to flavor? Oh, that rhymed. That was good. In other words, we got to, we got to, we got to, we, we, and the, the coolest thing about this is, is the correction from God is not, a, it's not a, Oh, what's your psh? No, it's this. This is how he works. He's a good father. He points us in the right direction. That's called correction. And uh, have you ever had somebody tell you something that you just wanted to punch him in the face? Like, you know, like somebody comes up to you and just be like, da 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 da, and you're like, oh, Jesus, help me. I mean, throw him out the truck, you know, whatever it might be. You just, you're ready. But, G, but the Lord can say that same thing to you. Like, hey, you need to. And, and what happens is it's his goodness. Because see, here's the thing. His goodness, the Bible tells us it is his goodness that leads us to repentance. And that word repentance means a change of mind. And so why, why it, it enables you is because, again, why God corrects is because he wants to change your direction. If God wanted to change your direction, but he didn't come with goodness, it wouldn't work. So he comes with, like, his goodness leads you to the path that he desires for you. I know the thoughts, of, I mean, Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, we, we quote that all the time. But if you think about this, or if you read in Psalms how he, your destinies and the good things, he, or in Ephesians, where he prepared good things before you were ever born to walk in. This is what he desires for you. So when we get off course... He's a good father, and he directs or corrects, points us in the right direction. So we get there. And so that's even in the church, that the, the, the Word of God, and I think it's really important that we understand that the Word of God is like a hammer. But the Word of God, um, it, when that hammer, a hammer can strike a hand, listen, or it can break a shackle. How many of you know you don't just trust anybody to swing the hammer? You know, it's like, ah, oh, gee. Right? It's going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. Trust me. Right? You guys follow that? It's going to hurt you more than... Okay. All right. Um, anyway. And so in, in, in Corinthians, you see this, this correction that goes on in the church. But you also see with that, you see spiritual gifts on a level that is, is, is wow. You, what do you see is you see God's grace in display. You see the grace of God, because see what they received at Corinth, they, re, they heard the message of the good news, and they knew they could not receive it based upon their own merit. And as long as you think you're going to walk in something based on your own merit, you are actually going to hinder the grace of God. You'll actually frustrate the grace of God. And I want to talk about grace this morning because what I, uh, I heard, it just it completely changed, cha uh, changed my view on grace or not even view on grace, just an understanding or a piece of it. And so I want to just define it this morning. And, and I, I, it's really interesting because every letter, and I say every letter, I just started flipping through. Uh, it se seems really interesting if you get a get out your New Testament, and you start going to the, through the epistles, which is the letters to the churches, you know what it says? Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. And if you'll throw up that scripture I ran up there last minute and gave you, Hebrews chapter 12. Um, have you ever felt, and, and, and I haven't defined grace yet, so uh, I'm going to read this and then I'll define it. So just hang in there with me. But uh, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Uh, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So here's this, this scripture. You're saying, where, how does this go with grace? Well, the next scripture is going to tie it in. But have you noticed that today there is more, um, the, the wrestling that's going on is according to Ephesians chapter 6. You know, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principal. But the wrestling that's going on is very much uh, always directed at people. It's very directive. We're passionate, and, and there's very much that way. And, 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 um, and I would say even this, it would not just be to, on the political spectrum, although it's definitely there. It's, it's been there for a long time. But I would say even more so to your close friends, to your friends, to, your, to just, just, just to, to your acquaintances, to the people in your church, to your coworkers, to your family members, to your, to your dad, to your mom, to brother, sister, aunt, uncle, whatever it might be. There's just this, this uh, there's a, there's, there's, 
to some extent, there's things that you're having to fight to live at peace that you didn't have to seem to fight. It's just more, it's more constant. It's just a more constant warfare to take a thought captive instead of take, receive that thought and dwell on why they did this and those people like that. And can you believe that? And how they, it's, it's just everywhere. Okay. Here's why it's everywhere. Because listen to the next verse. He says, make the effort. Okay, let me go back. Let's read it again because I want to pick up here. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Um, Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So he says, make every effort to to live at peace and see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. Okay. Have you ever heard the scripture talking about falling short, that you could fall short of the grace of God, that you maybe wouldn't, you would fall from grace, that you wouldn't, maybe that you wouldn't uh, measure up to receive grace? Hey, this is not what this is saying, okay? If you were to, tr- if you were to take that fall short, it just, it means uh, to, 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 to um, oh, I'm going to give you the exact, exact translation because it's, it's, it's super good. Uh, bear with me just for a moment. Um, it's this right here. Um... Hold on with me one moment. I, I had it pulled up. It's so good. See to it that no one falls short, and this is what I would say, lacking. This is the word I couldn't figure out because I was trying to remember. Lacking. Have you ever lacked, felt like you'd lacked the grace of God? And you're saying, well, I don't know. That's not God's unmerited favor. Let me define now. So, again, walk in peace. Walk with, with, with people and see to it that you don't lack the grace of God. See to it that no one falls short or lacks or it finds themselves in a place where they're lacking the grace of God. I, I, I wanna, I'm going to get to this, uh, the definition here in a moment, but I want to bring to your remembrance, maybe you don't know the story, but there was a story of a king uh, uh, that had, um, uh, was owed a great deal by a man. This is in the Gospels. And this man could not pay the debt. Like it was way beyond. He would never be able to pay it. And the king extended what you would call grace or, or forgiveness to him. But this same man was owed a very small, a very small bill by another. And when he came to him, he had him thrown in jail until he could pay it. Well, when the king heard about it, he was upset, and he said, now you throw him into jail and sell his kids, just like, he, you know. And so what was happening is, is there was a shortage of grace because of a shortage of grace. Now, am I saying, or what I'm, what I'm, ta- am I ta- what I'm talking about, is there is your salvation shorted? No, but the favor... Or, and then I'm going to talk about the definition here in just a moment. That which is in your life, you can lack. You can lack, and let me define it this way, a touch from God. You can lack a touch from God in areas of your life. Let me define grace for you now uh, 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 as it would have been described uh, to a church that had never heard the word grace before. Or had never heard grace as in term of a Christian term. Right now we think grace, and if your name's grace, your parents must be Christians. Grace, uh, it's on a scrolly letter on a wall in somebody's home. It's grace, you know, oh grace. You know, grace is like a Christian term now. But do you know when Paul communicated to the Corinthians, when Paul communicated to all these churches that had found Christ, he was trying to communicate in that day a a message that had never been communicated before of the gospel. And so he was, in a sense, robbing words that people understood to communicate a new idea of, of, of the good news of the gospel of Christ. So he took words of that day that they would have understood ideas and thoughts and taken those and say, okay, it's like you did it. And he, he would formulate, in a sense, his words to create an understanding of how, you know, it's like with Jesus, he talked in parables. 
they understood because they were farmers or they were fishermen. They understood about these kind of things. And so here is, is Paul. And now he's writing in, in, in Greek because he, that's the language of the Roman Empire. And here he is. He's, he's trying to communicate to these people the message of Christ. To communicate to these people that are right in Corinth. We're just outside of Rome. I mean, just a, not a stone's throw, but close, you know, in proximity. A major hub in the Roman Empire trying to communicate to people of Greek mythology, okay? Trying to communicate with people that are that understand all about gods and the goddess of this and the goddess of this and the god, god of this and, and, and the Hercules and the, you understand. So he is communicating with, with words of that day. And so he uses this word grace and the word grace would have been used among the Greeks to, and it would be defined like this, touched by the gods, Touched by the gods. And this is where we have, uh, uh, and the word grace or charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, charis, is actually comes from the word um, chera, or w- let me re- define it. Hold on real quick. I want, to, I want you to be very accurate here. Um, so good. Oh, this is so good. It comes from the Greek word C-H-A-I-R-O. Here's why it's so important. You're like, oh, I don't need to know all the Greek and this and that. Listen, words, we, we talked about this, that words have an origin, but they also have an author, okay? Um, but if you don't understand some, uh, oftentimes the, the origin, then what happens is that which is supposed to be multiplied to you, okay, which is grace. Listen to this in, in, in 1 Peter or 2 Peter 1, 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. If I don't understand what Paul was talking about when it comes to grace, then the very thing that God wants multiplied to me and to be abounding to me, and, and I'm talking to, to parents here and talking to the baby dedication today, those that were the, the, in this world, it's like, oh my gosh, Lord, help us. We're, we're having kids in this hellhole of, 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 like, I didn't have to face this. Like, the things my kids are having to navigate. I don't know how they're doing it. Here's how. Grace. Because where sin abounds, grace abounds more. And so where there's sin, there's more grace. And so and in that scripture in Romans, it says, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. It says, Really, it would be better translated like this, or you heard like this. That which is already abounding, where there's sin, or that it's abounding, it's abounding even more. So where there's sin, there was already more than enough grace. But where there's more sin, there's more than enough that which was already more than enough to take care of the sin in the first place. So, so where there was sin, there was more than enough grace. Where there's more sin, it still wasn't too much for grace, but there's even more grace to take care of the sin of that day. So as parents, there's more grace for you, more, uh, and again, we're going to, more grace, more of God's touch in your life to parent, more of God's touch in this day and age to navigate and to, 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 uh, make, to, to, to have enough sense in this world how to navigate uh, everything that we've never been there before. And, and more than enough grace to, to, to uh, or God's touch concerning your finances, your job, your health. Well, there's just no nutrition in this stuff today and everyone's got gut problems. And, every, and by this day, we're all going to be this. And no, no, no. Listen, there's more than enough grace. There's more than enough of a touch of God. And this is this word, listen, cherish, which would have been used as touched by the gods. And if you were touched by the gods, it would have produced a charisma or that which would look like a gift. It would be very much definite that the gods have touched you. Now, when, when we talk about Greek mythology or we talk about the God, the, all their different gods, listen, They were God's little g, okay? But there was definitely and still was supernatural power, okay? Just as in uh, you have God and you have Satan. There is demonic 
power? Have you ever maybe been in a movie theater and watched some of these trailers of like just kind of crazy demonic stuff and it's like you can just feel like you can feel the, the presence? Have you ever been in your room and maybe you have, 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 have felt a demonic presence? Maybe you've been in a certain area and you can feel an oppression in an area. You, you sense a, 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 a presence and I would say even more than a presence, a power of a different realm. Same is true when you come to church. You've been in a service and, and you've experienced the presence or the power of God. It happens sometimes in worship. It happens when the word is ministered and it happens all different, all different, different ways and different times. But this is, uh, and I don't even know where I, where I was going fully on that, but um, kind of lost that there. But anyway, so Cheris, Grace. Little G, touched by God. That's right. So they were touched. It would be very much, if someone say, oh, they've been cherished. That person, maybe, maybe they're like uh, Hercules. Just, just an amazing strength. Or maybe they just have way, a way with words. To where, to where their business back in the day would have been so blessed and da da da. Oh, they're just grace. They're touched by God's to prosper. They're touched by God's to have all those women falling all over them. They're touched by God's or whatever it might be. This is how this word would be used. But its origin would, be, would have been from, and that's where I'm getting back to, would have been from the word C H A I R O, which means to rejoice. So here, listen to this. So this word that for something to touch or for a God to touch you came from the word that means to rejoice over. So here's what I would tell you. God rejoiced over you. And so what happened is he sent Jesus to tear down the wall by the blood of Jesus so that he could touch you again. Y'all didn't get that. He loved you so much. That he sent his only son to tear down a wall. Listen to this. There was because there was a wall that, 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 that was in between us. Listen to this, Ephesians chapter 2, 13 through 14. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You Corinthians, you this, you that, you again, he says, you who once were afar off, you were brought near. By the blood of Christ, you were brought near. And, and Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 4, I thank God for the grace given to you. I thank God for that which has been given to you, that you have and you hold this grace. Is, I thank God that he touched you. I thank God that he touched you with that which is untouchable. That he touched you, you filthy, da, 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 da. Why? Because the blood of Christ, next verse in Ephesians chapter 2 13 or verse 14 brought you near by the blood of Christ verse 14 for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one he has destroyed the barrier and the dividing wall of hostility you know how he did it the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus broke down the wall you remember in the old testament when when Moses went up to the mountain and, and the Lord showed him how to make a tabernacle that was in the order of heaven. And, you know, we, maybe we sing this song, Take me into the holy of holies, right? Okay, so that's like kind of a, a maybe you don't know that song, all right? Um, but there is a picture and, and, uh, of the temple in heaven, and Moses was given the understanding or the dimensions and how it was to be a brazen altar and uh, incense and all these kind of things. And then there would be this place, there were the mercy seat, which were God, where the blood of Jesus was actually poured out. And then the veil was torn from top to bottom that day. Glory to God. And that veil that was torn was the presence uh, of God dwelled on the other side in the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Uh, right there, and, and then there would be then a veil that would have kept his presence from being with the people, because where there is sin, there, cry, sin cries out for judgment, and the judgment of sin is death. So God had to stay away from His people that He loved so much until He could work with man and partner with Him to get into play that which would be His Son to bring a payment, which would be the blood of Jesus, to tear the wall in half so that He could touch you again. So, grace is got touched by God, but it comes from this word that He rejoices over you. 
It's a rejoice. So the gods, okay, now let's talk like to the Greeks. The, the gods must like you. The gods must like you to have cherished you, to have touched you and empowered you to be the man that gets all the women or to be the one that's eloquent with words or to be the one that's mighty in valor or to be the one that is whatever it might be. Let me tell you, God must really like you. He must really, really, really like you, you Corinthian. Oh my God. You, whatever you would identify with that the enemy likes to talk to you about, whatever, whatever he calls you that he knows he can cut you, you addict. He must love you a lot. He must rejoice over you. He must rejoice over you so much when he couldn't touch you, otherwise it would have killed you. But he made a way and he sent Jesus so that he could. So that grace could come. So there is grace or there is a touch from God. Matter of fact, it would be, it'd be almost as this. This is how it would be described. If, if there was a magical spell put on you, that would be grace. Almost um, as if the, 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 it was so evident because you were doing what you couldn't do on your own. Yeah. There was something that you had access to that everyone else didn't. It would be as if a magic spell. You know, Disney uh, plays on the magic spells quite a bit. How many of you know I'm talking about Sleeping Beauty, all these kind of things. Uh, the one in the woods, uh, uh, these new ones, Frozen. Uh, what? Snow White? I'm lost up here. I hear too many noises. But, no, there was one that the wrong red hair, I think it was like Brave or Bro... Brave, okay? Uh, so yeah, there's all these ones, right? Hey, straight up. The, 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 it, it, this is, it's not something that is not real. That's very real. Very real. Um, but what's even more real is the reality of, of heaven's armies. And, 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 and angelic assistance, not just demonic uh, uh, assistance or oppression. Okay, but it's very, very real. There would be, a, in a sense, a spell put on somebody, a magical spell that was so, they're saying, they've been touched by God because everything's, listen, this is what grace is to look like to you and me. It's to look like, there is, just like Paul said, I, by the grace given to me, by the grace given to me, I, Paul, lay a foundation. Okay, so can you imagine trying to write these scriptures and just being a Paul? Or just being a Joe, or a Landon, or, or a Chelsea. I mean, can you imagine just being a Juan and, you know, having to write the New Testament and, like, lay a foundation for the church? Doesn't that just, that seems difficult. But what about if you're a Juan with the grace? What if you're about, what if, what if in other words, what if you are a Juan with a touch from God? What if, listen, what if concerning every day, and we're going to look at a few scriptures this morning, concerning parenting, what if there was a grace to parent? What if there was a touch from God? And, and I, I almost want to put it that way as if in, in, because it makes sense to your to understanding because grace and peace, that's what Paul, or, or, or when it was Peter wrote, he said, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge. In other words, there's an understanding. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of understanding. What if there, in a sense, okay, was almost as if, again, for understanding purposes, a spell or a magic spell or like there was something that was, that you had a deposited on you. Or that you could come to a throne and receive a grace, a touch from God that would help you in time of need. I mean, we play video games and we have to go get, I remember, you know, like a little a boot, a firepower. 
And firepower is great. It's better than a big mushroom. I mean, the dude's eating shrooms all the time. This is, it's, and he's like, hey, hey, you know. But a firepower will make you big and give you fire, right? I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to explain to you grace. That there is something that you could, he tells us in, in Hebrews, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of where God touches you and gives you the grace and the mercy, right? That which you need, that which will help you or help you overcome or be more than enough in time of need. Come on, somebody. Let's, let's think. Nintendo. There's grace. There's a touch from God for your finances. There's a touch for God, from God for your healing. There's a touch from God to parent. There's a touch from God to be a wife, to be a husband. Listen, there's a touch from God to be a friend. I experienced what I started out this message with, with in Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 12, where I felt like I was falling a little bit short of the grace of God. What did that word short, falling short? It doesn't mean that I don't have the grace of God, but it does mean, help me out with the word that I had to look up. I was lacking. You ever felt like you're lacking God's touch in your life? He attributed it to relationships and that which is among other people. The same is the story that I was talking to you about. Uh, about the, the man and the master and the man and the servant and, and who didn't give. And even when you look in, in Mark 11, 23, or Mark 11, when he says, uh, when you stand praying, if you have ought, and this is the, right in that same scripture, it says, have faith in God and, when you, and, and how you say to this mountain, be removed. Can you move a mountain? No, but what if God touched you? But he said, he preceded that statement by saying, hey, if you have, or in that, he said, but listen, if you have ought, forgive. And I found myself in a place of ought or frustration. And have you ever noticed when you have ought in your heart or frustration, it's really easy to vocalize it, even though you know you shouldn't. Am I the only one that ever is like, ah. Right? And then, and then you're like, you think about it, right? And, uh, and, and li listen to this, listen to this. You think about it, listen to this. Oh, this is good. 2 Corinthians 10.5, cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the what, somebody? The knowledge of God. How is grace multiplied to you? Grace and peace be multiplied to you, 2 Peter 1. How? Through the knowledge of God. So there is something that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And that's a, a, a thought against, a vain thought, a thought about you. And how you feel or how much better you are. And about how you don't. And about how, you know, a vain thought. That which exalts itself against what God says. And you, you're, you're exalted. Someone else is, uh, is brought low. Or, and what's happening is the very thing that God says is being dethroned in your life, and so therefore, the grace that is to be multiplied to you is just lacking. And my life, I'm trying to struggle and whatever through the stuff, and I can't, I just, I just feel like I need some grace. I just want some grace. Well, I'm telling you, you want some grace? You want it multiplied to you in the knowledge of Him? I'm telling you, one of the number one ways that the enemy's working today is to get you and me not at peace with one another. How can I not be at peace with you when He made peace with me, a Corinthian? How can I not be at peace with you that blah, 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 when I was just like that. And the grace, the touch of God that also has the gift of God, the gifts of grace, the gifts of the Spirit are simply gifts of grace. Gifts of grace, a, gift, a touch from God that, is, that you and I are to carry touches from God to people today. 
But, but the reason I, I can take a vain thought and be frustrated about you is because I measure myself as better and I exalt myself over you and I wouldn't have and I don't. And what happens is I fall or I, I don't have enough or I now find myself lacking that which would have gave me the ability to move a mountain that I couldn't move, to, 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 would have empowered me to prosper in, in that which I didn't. And now we're trusting in our own self. Now, you all got all dressed up for church, fixed your hair, took a shower, some of you, brushed your teeth. <laughs> so, since you're here, we might as well finish what you came for. Rather than being a 15-minute deal here left. I'm, it's probably going to take all of that. I want to talk to you about some grace in some places. Just ask some questions because you know what I found? The, the grace is mentioned 129 times in the New Testament. Grace. So there's a grace. There's all kinds of graces. But I, I want to draw your attention to just a lot, uh, maybe five or six different, maybe t- eight, ten <laughs> <laughs> scriptures this morning. And I want to just maybe read it and then ask you a question and ask you, where are you concerning this touch from God? Is your faith in the touch? Or is your faith in the grace? Because that's how you're saved. That's what it says in Ephesians. It says, uh, you are saved by grace. In other words, when you... Listen to this. This is just so cool. When you, when you put grace in this way where God is a touch, like you're touched by God. When you, when, you, when you put this together and you go, okay... You've been sealed, the Bible tells us, with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption, right? Until Christ comes back. So in other words, how do you see, it's like sealed, duck, or or, duck, (laughs) duck, I like the duck, that worked, goose, right? No, no, in other words, there's a sealing that God puts his hand on you, so this one's mine, this one's mine. And the Spirit of God comes and dwells on When you receive Christ, when you make Him your Lord and Savior, and you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. The Bible says His Spirit may, bears witness with our spirit that we are a child of God. And He comes and makes His abode, it says, or makes His home in you. And so the same Spirit that rose Christ Jesus from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you when you get born again and when you call upon the name of the Lord. And He says, my, my daughter, my son, mine. And because you're his son and because you're his daughter, and he knows how to give good things. The parable of the prodigal son where well, even when he was away, he, he had a robe ready. He had a ring. Listen, he was fatting, putting food in the calf well before he ever showed up. Like he has good plans for you. But I want to just uh, maybe hit, I read this. Grace is God's holy love on the move. I heard somebody once said that. Somebody said this, uh, amazing grace. And I was really taken back this week. Um, and I just, kept, I just I said, God, it's just so amazing. Just so amazing. Just, just so amazing. Just so amazing. God's love is just so amazing. It's just so amazing. And... Um, and you know, when I look at the grace of God, the goodness of God, the love of God, it causes adjustments in my life. It causes adjustments with me and other people. Amazing grace, not cheap, but free. Wow. Paid everything, but it's free. You can have that. You can have grace. You can also frustrate it. You can also lack it. I lack it when I don't see it appropriately. When I don't see how much he rejoiced over me to come to move and send his son from heaven to break and tear down a wall to touch me. There's a grace for me. There's a grace for you. One picture 
that's used to describe grace would be as if the king was going through the streets in his chariot or the thing that was carried by the people and he sees somebody on the side maybe it's a child playing in the dirt and he says stop and the curtains open and he gets down off of his chariot or off of his thing that's being carried off of his throne and he stands in the dirt and he comes down to that child and he opens his bag and he gives them that which will change that child's life that's grace that's that's the picture of grace he came down from on high and did something not because that child did anything that child was playing in the dirt that child had nothing to offer that king that child could do nothing but the king had something and what the king had and what the king has for you and what the king has for me he has this love for me and his goodness that moved him to move to me and I couldn't pay it back so now let's talk about grace 1 Corinthians 15 10 by the grace of God I am but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace toward me was not in vain I want to just stop right there what are you we use this scripture a lot of times I well by the grace of God I am what I am like can't help it what has the touch of God caused you to be what are you now by the grace of God Am I still identifying with a Corinth or with, with all of these things or am I identifying as a child of God? What are you? This is huge. Your identity, what you identify with, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am, we sing these songs, a child of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am redeemed. By the grace of God, I'm healed. By the grace of God, I'm provided. By the grace of God, I'm free. By the grace of God, I'm not depressed. By the grace of God, what are you? By the grace of God. By the grace of God, I'm the husband that I want to be. By the grace of God, I am what I am. What are you? 2 Corinthians 9 8. This is about trusting in the grace. And God is able. This is be underlined and highlighted and circled. And God is able to make all grace abound toward me. That you having all sufficiency in all things have an abundance for every good work. This is about increase, but this more than about increase, it's about trust in the grace and trust in God instead of trust in my own strength. Have you ever been there? We're trying to, you ever try to do something, you, you pray and you ask the Lord and you waited long enough, like a week? And then what do you do? You do it. You make a way. Do it on your own. Don't trust him. What, do you ha what happens is you, that, that which is wanted to abound towards you, grace, a touch, you just walk away from. I got this, Lord. Because he says he does what? He gives more and more grace to the humble. It'd be that picture like kneeling before a king. But he opposes, I got this, the proud. Wow. So who do you trust in today for your business, for your children, for that which you feel insufficient for? First Peter 4.10. Every man has received the gift, it says. It tells us that there's a gift that's been given to you. First Peter 4.10. As each of you have received a gift, a charisma. You got a charisma. You got a, a grace given, a God touch on your life. He said, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace or the many-sided grace of God. That which a manifold, like on an engine or a, a septic tank or whatever it might be. It, it goes to all these different places. It's so diverse. What's your grace? 
That's what I ask you. What, what, what charisma, what, what grace gift is given to you? And this is what I would ask you. Are you using it to minister to others or is the grace for you? More and more grace. He wants to give more and more grace. Are you stewarding that grace? Are you a singer and you're not singing? Are you, uh, are you graced by God to make money? That's a great grace. It's no better than a grace to take care of children or to be a house, to be at home take, taking care of the house. There's a grace. What grace has been given to you? I would tell you this this morning. Acknowledge the grace. Write down the grace. I don't know if I have any grace. Listen, I didn't ask you what you carry. I asked you what he gave you. I didn't, I, this is, uh, what is the touch of God on your life? What did he do? You know, this is why it's so great to be in relationships and to, to be a part of small groups and be a part of like frontline men's ministry tomorrow night, plug there, uh, steak. Because you have people that will say something to you and say what God says about you. God, we need to hear that. Sometimes we can't see in ourselves what other people see. Maybe your grace is a word of encouragement. You're an encourager. Galatians 2.21. Don't frustrate the grace of God. You know, this touch, you can, not only can you, you lack it, you can have it, but you can frustrate it. Look, at listen to this. It says, so do not set aside that's what it means. One translation says frustrate. To set aside. You know how frustrating it would be when you got, when you're running through the castle and you got a firepower that can drop, but you don't hit the B button and then you die. <laughs> and that was your last life and you couldn't win the game. Some of y'all understand what I'm talking about. It's there. It's there. Don't lay the grace of God aside. How do I lay it aside? If, light, if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. He, we, we, we lay it aside when we think it is our performance that brings about his touch instead of his kindness, instead of his goodness that has given us everything. Next verse, everything that we need. I think it was the next verse. Or 3.3, 3, excuse me, Galatians 3.3. 3. I don't know if you have that one. I didn't, wasn't real clear in my notes. It says, you are foolish having begun in the spirit. You are now made perfect by the flesh. That's the frustrating. That's, that's that peace. It all goes together. He said, don't set it aside and say, well, I can't have that. I can't be touched by God because of all that I've touched. You ever felt like that? You ever felt like I can't be touched by God because of all that I touch? But yet Paul's talking to the church at Corinth and saying, Grace that's given to you, I thank God for it. Wow. Don't frustrate the grace. Remember, it was the grace, it was the goodness that caused the change in your and my life. It's what led us to Him, it led, led us a change of mind, a change of heart. My want to changes when I see His goodness. Don't frustrate the grace. Run to it. Run to the throne and say, God, touch me today. When you mess up, run there. Say, God, touch me. Touch me, a sinner. Touch me. Just touch me. God, I need your help. God. God, don't just frustrate the grace. Second Corinthians 6, 1 through 2, and then one more after this, and that's it. Second Corinthians 6, 1 through 2. As God's co-workers, we use you to not receive the gift. As God's co-workers, we use you, you ugh, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. 
Next verse. But use it. But use it. He says, for he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I had, listen, he says, don't receive it and not use it. He says, in the time you needed it, I, I had favor upon you. I heard you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. So don't walk away. Don't do it on your own. Don't, don't, but instead, trust in the grace of God. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Don't receive the grace of God and not use it. Every day, like when I get, get up to minister, Father, thank you for the grace to minister today. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the grace to, to wherever it's at. Don't receive the touch in vain. Use it. Use that. God, thank you for the, your grace today. Romans 5.20 the law was brought in so that the trespasses might increase. In other words, you would just see all the shortcomings and how you couldn't measure up. <sighs> but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Grace to you today. Grace to you this is how every letter would start. Grace and peace to you. Grace be multiplied to you. Grace to you. Let me say it this way. God touch you today. God touch you today. God touch you. God touch you. God touch your body. God touch your finances. God touch your marriage. God touch you. Grace to you. God touch your soul. God touch you. God touch you eternally and be sealed today. God touch you today. Grace to you. God, touch you today. Do you need to be touched by God? Let's just stand. If you need to be touched by God, just right where we're at, we're going to lift our hands to Him and we're going to receive His touch. We're going to come boldly to the throne where He gets off of His throne. I, I gotta, you got to see this picture. The picture of grace where the king is coming through the streets and he looks over and he sees that child and he gets off of his throne. He gets off of his chair and he moves to them. When you come to the throne, do you think he, this is his, what do you need? Listen, he comes and he embraces, listen, you sit, you in a sense, when you come to the throne, I want to get this picture into your, your, your mind as a father, as what we would call Abba Father. When a child comes to the throne and his father is the one that sits upon it, you don't kneel before it, you sit on it with him on his lap. This is what happened because he wants to touch you. Because he wants to get you everything you need. When I come, I come as a, as a child of God. And I come to receive the Father. And I lift my hands up. And I just say, God, I need you. And he reaches down. And he reaches down. And he touches us. Father, thank you for the grace this morning. Just reach up to Him. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace to love like you love. Thank you for your grace. Whatever you need, we come. Lord, we trust you. Thank you for your grace by which we're saved, redeemed, set free. We love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're here this morning, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Receive grace by simply calling upon his name, believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth him as Lord. Just calling upon him. It would be a great day to do that. Right with your right where you're at.
If that's you, you've never made your Jesus your Lord, I want you to lift your hand to the Lord right now, right where you're at. Just reach if you want to give your heart to Jesus. If you've never done it before. I can't see. We've got tears in my eyes. But we're just, lift your hands to the Lord. We just say, Father, just everyone can do it with me. Just reach your hand and say, Father, thank you for Jesus, for sending your son to die on a cross and make a way for me to come to you. Today, I declare that you're my Lord, you're my Father, I'm your son. You died for me and you rose again. And every time I come, I know where to come. It's to the throne as a child. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys today. Uh, I think we have, I don't know what we have this week. Nothing but Wednesday, right? Front, yeah, Frontline Men's Ministry tomorrow night. Other than that, we have Wednesday night church. And Bible school, yeah, if you're signed up tomorrow night. Uh, other than that, We love you all. Grab those kiddos. Have a great Sunday afternoon. Enjoy the heat.